The sun always shone on the mountains of Fibble. The wind and the rains never came. To call the place beautiful, no one would quibble, though hard on the feet, they'd exclaim. But high in those hills, past the rocks and the rubble, so high that the clouds were below, sat two tiny towns that were nothing but trouble. As you listen, you'll see that it's so. Now the town to the west that thought it was best bore the name Flibberoloo, where the women and men since 1710 have worn on their heads one large shoe. Now in town number two, one big shoe wouldn't do. So the people of Gibberty Lot would look down and bellow at shoe-headed fellows and place on their own heads a pot. Mine's really more of a kettle. For days without end, these two neighbors would bicker as to whose headgear was best, and the shoes and the pots would fly ever thicker from morning to night without rest. But not all of the people who lived in these cities were angry and bitter and vile. A few would write poems and sing happy ditties and greet all their friends with a smile. One Flibian fellow who hated to fight tried hard not to act like a mobster. While pots crashed around him from morning till night, he'd just play with his pet wind-up lobster. They kept to themselves, and they'd talk and they'd talk. Until one day he said, Hey, let's go for a walk. I'm tired of lying around like a squid. I want to go out there. So that's what he did. The shoe-headed boy and his blue plastic friend walked out of their town and began to descend to the dark rocky valley between the two cities, away from his friends and their light-hearted ditties. Ba-la-la, ba-la-la. Hey, this is swell, he said. Gosh, this is fun. It's great that my lobster can get out and run. But neither the toy nor the boy with the shoe could see the disaster about to ensue. For up in the rocks, hidden just out of sight, were six beady eyes filled with anger and spite. Six beady eyes watched our hero meander, two shifty crooks and their ruthless commander. Oh, look what good fortune, the nasty one said. Here comes a poor fool with a shoe on his head. I bet he's got money. I bet he's got gold or maybe some jewelry he'd like us to hold. Whatever the booty, I think I could stand it. Why, that's what I live for. That's why I'm a bandit. And then they attacked him from under their rock. First they knocked off his shoe, <laughs> then they knocked off his sock. <laughs> but the thing they did next was extremely unfunny. Why, they shook him so hard that he dropped his milk money. Hey! He protested. I don't like your ilk. How will I go strong if I don't drink my milk? But they didn't care. They'd accomplished their goal. So they put our friend down, stuck his head in a hole, and walked off with his money, every last nickel. Then yelled back as they left. See you around, silly pickle. Um, I'm a cucumber. Then he said with a moan, Well, I guess I'm alone. But this was a loneliness he'd never known. His friends were far off and his lobster was missing. The sound he could hear was just the wind hissing. Hello? Hello? Things looked pretty grim for our Flibian buddy, his head in a hole, his shoe bent and muddy. But then, were those footsteps? Oh, could it be true? Along came the mayor of Flibberolu. Of anyone, surely he'd help the poor soul. Hello, said the boy with his head in a hole. I seem to have fallen. I seem to be stuck. But now that you're here, well, I guess I'm in luck. Oh, dear, said the mayor, observing the shoe. A fellow in need, and he's Flibian, too. <laughs> Young man, I have noticed your dire situation, and please rest assured that I share your frustration. But uh, how can I put this? Uh, what can I say? Ah, uh, maybe you understand better this way. Is that music? I'm busy, busy, dreadfully busy. You've no idea what I have to do. Busy. Busy, shockingly busy, much, much too busy for you. Oh, I see. As soon as the mayor had finished his song, a Flibian doctor came strolling along. Out of my way! She said, starting to slide. If you and your pickle would please step aside, I'm very important I can't stand and chat. Well, that's not my pickle. I found him like that. Besides, it so happens I'm noteworthy too. Why, I am the mayor of Flibberoloo. Um... Um, I'm a cucumber. 
I see, said the doctor. Then you'll understand without an appointment I can't lend a hand. They're folks with bronchitis, they're kids with a flu, she said to the mayor of Flibberoloo. If I'm not mistaken, you're quite busy too. Well, they talked about schedules, compared daily planners, till finally a voice said, Please pardon my manners. I don't mean to bug you. I see that you're busy, but being inverted has made me quite dizzy. The two other Flibbians paused for a while. They looked at each other, then said with a smile, We're busy, busy, dreadfully busy. You've no idea what we have to do. Busy, busy, shockingly busy. Much, much too busy for you. Cause we're busy, busy, frightfully busy. It was just dreadful. How could they desert their Flibian friend with his head in the dirt? That's it, then. I'm finished. I'll die here down under. If they would not help me, then who would? He wondered. But wait. Someone else on the road overhead. Would they help a friend beaten up, left for dead? Oh, look. On his head, not a shoe but a pot. Why, this little guy was from Gibberty Lot. Would he help a Flibian? Certainly not. The boy with the pot saw our friend with the shoe. Oh, look! He exclaimed. He's from Flibberoloo. Why, they think we're garbage. They pelt us with shoes. Why should I care if he's beaten and bruised? But out here in the wild, his chances are slim. If I was in need, would I want help from him? He looked at our friend, and he looked at the shoe. And then in his heart, he knew what to do. He may be Flibbian, that's plain to see. But God made him special, just like he made me. So we got him unstuck, and he picked up his shoe. And together, they walked back to Flibberoloo, out of the valley and back into town, where he stayed by his side till the doctor was found. Oh, my! Said the doctor. He's wearing a pot. The little one there is from Gibberty Lot. <coughs> you saved this fellow? You pulled him through it? I don't understand. Tell me, why did you do it? He has a shoe and I have a pot But when we look deeper there's more that we've got God made us special and now I can see If you're special to him then you're special to me So the boy with the pot gave the doctor some money to pay for the cucumber's bill. And the mayor cried out with his eyes moist and runny. I'm touched by his act of goodwill. If this little guy can take care of his brother, when he lives in one town and he in the other, why can't we all try to help one another? And love will surround our fair hill. Now, if you visit the mountains of Fibble, you won't see a shoe or a pot. Instead, they throw flowers and candy to nibble. I bet that you'd like it a lot.
And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry. The part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Our curtain opens as Larry, having just finished his morning bath, is searching for his hairbrush. Having no success, Larry cries out, Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where is my hairbrush? Oh, where, 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 oh,
<clears throat> we need your help, Junior. Our starship, the USS Apple Pies, is in grave danger. Oh, really? Tell me more. In just eight minutes, the ship and its crew will be smashed to bits by a giant meteor. Good heavens. Well, can't you just move the ship out of the way? That's just it. The Apple Pies is completely without power. Dead in the water. She can't budge an inch. She's stuck. Oh, dear. Well, gee, how can I help? Didn't you minor in aerospace technology at the Happy Tots Preschool? Why, yes. Yes, I did. What'd you major in? That's not important now. Fado. <gasps> Me too. No time for chit-chat. Junior, only you can save the Apple Pies. Lieutenant Larry, the Shrinker Bee. Um, I think my helmet's on backwards. There it is, the USS Apple Pies. When we get on board, you'll be briefed by the ship's engineer, Scooter. Then you can get to work fixing the power. Okay. Returned. Hello, Scooter. Any luck? I'm afraid not, Captain. The engines have got no power, and we've only five minutes till that meteor smashes us to bits. How many people are on the ship? 364. And how many escape pods are there? Two. Drat. How much do you know about this meteor? Oh, funny you should mention it. Our sensors have just determined that the meteor is made entirely out of... What? Out of what? Popcorn! <gasps> A popcorn ball meteor. The worst kind. Um, would that be caramel or cheese? Because I don't like that cheese stuff very much. It gets stuck to my tooth. It makes precious little difference when it hits it 5,000 miles an hour. Ah. Good point. Meet me in St. Louis, Louis. Meet me at the fair. Hey, Don't who are those the guys? Lights are huh? shining. Any oh, place never mind the them. They're we the new guys. Coochie, coochie. I will be your tootsie wootsie. Meet me in St. Louis. I'll be waiting there. Well, maybe they have some ideas. What? Not the new guys. They don't know anything. All they do is sing and eat, eat and sing. Between you and me, I think they're crazy. We will dance the hoochie coochie. I will be your tootsie wootsie. Meet me in St. Louis. I'll be waiting there. Hi, I'm Junior. I'm Jimmy Gord. I'm Jerry Gord. We're the new guys. So, why do you sing all the time? Why don't you? Because it's weird. I mean, different. You know, sometimes differences can be good if we just take the time to get to know each other. Yeah, maybe. So, why do you eat so much? We're hungry, I guess. It's our metabolism or something. You know, sometimes I think I could eat a whole bus. Yeah, well, sometimes I think I could eat a whole spaceship. Oh, yeah? Well, sometimes I think I could eat a whole planet. Planet, planet, planet. planet. I could eat a rooster, a rooster, and more. How many escape well, pods did you say there were? Jimmy, did you mean what you said about eating a whole planet? Well, sure, but... How would you guys like to help save the ship? Well, gosh, let me swirl. Just stay here. Hey, it's kind of like a field trip or something. Only two minutes left. I hope this works. Do you know the map? 
Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Do you know the Muffin Man? He lives on Drury Lane. I bet I could eat all his muffins. Oh, well, I bet I could eat all his muffins in his house. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, some kind of a planet or something. Hey, maybe that's where the Muffin Man lives. Oh, uh, no, Jerry, he lives on Drury Lane. Oh, yeah. Hey, what is this stuff? It's popcorn. Let's eat it! Do you think it's possible? If anyone can do it, they can. Ten seconds left. I sure hope those gourds were hungry. Five, four, three, two, one. Incoming! No more for me, thanks. I'm full. Excuse me. Get him in here! Save the ship! Oh, it was nothing. Nothing? You're telling me saving 364 lives by rapidly consuming 14,000 metric tons of popcorn is nothing? Well, I guess maybe it's a little something. And to think I wouldn't be your friend just because you guys are different. Why, if you weren't different, none of us would be here right now. Well, I got a little bit hungry, so I was just snacking on the end table when, when I saw this. <gasps> it's some kind of electrical plug or something. Plug it in! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? You guys are something else! You know, it kind of reminds me of a song. Hit it, boys. Have you ever seen a boy with funny clothes? A girl with braces on her teeth or freckles on her nose? Some kids call them oddballs. Some kids call them weird. Is it my imagination, or does Aunt Ruth have a beard? God makes lots of people in all colors, shapes, and sizes. He loves them very much, and what we need to realize is that calling people names because they're different is wrong. Instead, we need to look on them in love and sing this song. I can be your friend. Some are skinny, some are stout. But the inside is the part that we're supposed to care about. Aye, that's where we got feelings that are very much the same. And so instead of weirdo, I think friend's a better name. I can be your friend. La, 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 la. I can be your friend. La, 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 la. If your hair is red or yellow, we can have lunch or share. What is it? Is something wrong? Oh, no. I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to invite Fernando to my party after all. Really? That was quick. What made you change your mind? Well, you know, being different can be good. Like, maybe if my party's about to be smashed by a giant popcorn bomb in there, Fernando could eat it. Or maybe if the slime monster shows up and tries to squirt slime all over us, Fernando could maybe blast him with his x-ray eyes. Well, I don't think Fernando could do those kinds of things. But I bet he could teach you about his country and show you the kinds of foods he likes to eat. Who knows? You might like it. Yeah, that sounds fun. I sure am proud of you for making the right decision. Well, it's time for sleeping. I love you, little mister. I love you, big mister. See you tomorrow. Okay. What is it now? Um, 
um, well, Lieutenant Larry here dropped our map right out of a spaceship. Sorry. And, uh, we were wondering if you could just give us directions to the freeway? I think we can make it from there. Out the window, down the street, and left at Mr. Slushy. Great. Thanks. That's what I said. I said left and Mr. Slushy. Oh no, you said right. I distinctly remember you saying right at Mr. Slushy. Why would I say that? That'd be, that'd be crazy. I'm kind of thirsty. Can we stop at Mr. Slushy? No, we need that money for tolls. driving around in their car, when suddenly, they hit a bump. We must have hit a bump! Hey, what you do that for? I didn't do it, you did, you big possum head! I did not, you taco salad rabbit nose! It did, too, casserole head, pimento loaf, iguana boy! Ha Now, Rose, apologize to your brother. Well, you know he just turned 18 years old. Yeah, so? So that would make him a casserole head, pimento loaf iguana man. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry about that, cabbage nose elves puppy. Yeah, and don't you forget it. Pa, there's somebody over there. Eh? Ooh, oh, you're right. Uh. Well, what kind of fella do you suppose that is, Ma? Oh, let's see. Hmm, it's no gripe, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah well, he's you know that. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really well, yeah. Well, it must be some kind of a bean or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what's that thing he's got on his head? Well, it's yellow. Um, cheese is yellow. Mm hmm. So that would make him a cheese-headed bean boy. Ooh. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a bean. I'm an asparagus. What'd the bean boy say? He said he was an asparagus. Who's it? Huh? Asparagus. A plant of the liliaceous genus. From the Greek, asparagus. Ooh. Ooh. And this is not cheese on my head. It is a hat. A yellow hat. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that crazy hair! <laughs> it looks like peas. Hey, Bean Boy, you been growing peas to your noggin? No. Well, that's just terrible. Don't those grapes know it's not nice to make fun of people? Well, that's just it, Bob. They didn't know how bad it made Junior feel. Well, jeepers, Larry. What happened next? Luckily, Junior's dad heard him laughing and came outside to see what all the commotion was about. Hey, what's all the commotion out here? Ooh, grapes. They were calling me Bean Boy and telling me I had peas on my head. Is that true? 
Oh, no, no, no. We would not do such a thing as what you have said we would have done. Except for maybe we did that, I guess, now that you... Oh, well, okay, we did that. Yep, that's what we did. So, Junior's dad explained to the grapes that when we make fun of people and call them names, it makes them feel very bad inside. He also told them that God wants us to be kind to everybody, and that when we act mean, it makes God feel sad too. Well, gee, I, I guess we never really stopped to think about it. Well, well, it was making you feel, you know. Yeah, we was just having some fun. Didn't mean nothing by it. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean it. We'll never be mean again. Okay, that's better. Now, Junior, is there anything you'd like to say to the grapes? Um, like what? Junior's dad explained to him that when someone says they're sorry for hurting you, and they really mean it, we need to forgive them. That way, we all feel better. Oh, I get it. Okay, I forgive you, grapes. <sighs> oh, that's great. All right. Now, doesn't everyone feel better? Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. That's right. It's almost time for supper. Come on inside, Junior. Junior? His name is Junior? Oh, oh that's a funny name! <laughs> okay, this is the last straw. I thought you said you weren't going to tease anymore. Well, that's exactly what we said. And we grapes always try to keep our promises. Well, isn't that right? Sure. Oh, yeah. Thing. yeah. Yes, 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 right. That's right. Now, what do you kids have to say to Junior? Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. Really? Oh, mighty sorry. I apologize. Sure, I'm sorry. Sorry. Boy, I sure am glad they got that straightened out. Yep. The grapes were really sorry this time, so once again, Junior forgave them. What? <clears throat> I said, once again, Junior forgave them. Are you serious? Well, I think so. Bob, am I serious? Oh, oh yeah, Larry. Uh, yeah, you're, you're serious. Mm -hmm. You see? I'm supposed to forgive them again after what they just did to me? Well, uh, yeah. Sure, I forgave them for calling me Bean Boy and saying I had cheese on my head, but now they're making fun of my name and they've laughed when the hall almost bagged my face clean up and when the truck picked me up and threw me in the sand. And you're telling me I'm supposed to forgive them again? Um, well, are you guys really sorry? Oh, we're sorry and, and we'll, we'll never do, do it, it again. again. You see, Junior, when we do bad things, it hurts God's feelings, too. God wants us to tell him we're sorry. The Bible says when we tell God we're sorry, he will always forgive us. No matter what? No matter what. Wow! That's right. And because God always forgives us, we need to forgive others when they hurt our feelings, too. Well, how many times am I supposed to forgive them? Um, well, uh, Bob? Gee, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, let's ask QWERTY. Hey, QWERTY, can you help us? We need to know how many times we're supposed to forgive people, according to the Bible. Maybe, uh, seven times? Matthew eighteen twenty two. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Oh, seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. I see. Um, do you know what 70 times 7 is? Mm, nope. How about you? Nope. Well, does anybody know what 70 times 7 is? Not? Well, let's see. I remember from college it was, uh, pi, pi R, I, O. What was it, 2? Or maybe 7? Ooh. Ooh! 
that's one smart grape. Well, there you have it. 490 times. Wow. So I guess we need to forgive each other, even if we make the same mistakes more than once. That's right, Junior. Now do you have something to say to the grapes? Yeah, I forgive you guys again. Thanks, oh, thanks, Junior. You know, now that we're gonna be nice and all, I don't think we should be called the Grapes of Wrath anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. well, well, what should we be called then? The Grapes of Nice? No, that's not it. That little girl of yours has quite a head for numbers. Maybe you could be the Grapes of Math. Well, everyone was very excited about the new name, but it was time for Junior to go inside and eat supper. So with the sun setting in the west and Rosie happily quoting the quadratic equation in the back seat, the Grapes of Wrath, I mean math, <laughs> drove off to share their niceness with the rest of the world. The end. Wow, that was great, Larry. But, um, are you sure that's how the story goes? Oh, yeah. Hey, kids, have you ever been bad? Do you remember when you broke your mom's favorite vase and then stapled it back together in hopes she wouldn't notice? That was bad. Do you remember when you put your pet snake in Aunt Millie's pajamas and she ran five miles without ever getting out of bed? That was bad, too. <laughs> And do you remember when you stuck your sister's teddy bear in the food processor and told her it got chewed up by a giant bear-eating lizard? And she believed it? That was really bad. Well, the Bible calls the bad things we do sin. And when we sin, we need to be forgiven. That's right. So I know what you're thinking. Jeepers, I've been bad. How do I get forgiven? Am I right? Well, moms, dads, and kids of all ages, have I got the thing for you. The new Ronco Forgivematic. Yes, sir. The new Ronco Forgivematic slices, dices, and purees your sins away. It's as easy as this. Just dial up your sin here. Press this button and bingo! God forgives you of your sin. But wait, there's more. Order now and you'll also receive a set of Jinsu 2 steak knives. The strongest knives on earth. Just listen to this. Hi, I'm a miner from West Virginia. In the last three weeks, we dug two miles through solid granite, all with one Jinsu 2 steak knife, and it's still going strong. That's right, you get the forgive and the steak knives, all for a low price of just $19.95. You've never seen a deal like this before, isn't that right? That's right. So don't delay, order today. Operators are standing by. Remember, you get the forgive and the steak knives, all for just $19.95. <clears throat> Not now, kid. Can't you see I'm busy? But I know of lots of people who've been forgiven for bad things they've done. Oh, oh, oh yeah? Well, they must have forgiven Maddox then, huh? No. Well, sure. You, you can't be forgiven without a forgiven Maddox. Well, isn't that right? Stop yanking me up and down. I'm getting sick. <laughs> The Bible says if we ask God to forgive us, then he will. You, you mean all you have to do is ask? Yep. You don't need a, a forgive a No. Are you sure about this? I sure am. Well, did I mention they also make great Julian fries? Well, just drop a potato in here, a push the button, and, and presto, out come the best fries you've ever tasted. Oh, look, it's time to go. Oh, but wait, there's more. Well, just spread these seeds on here, and, and in a few weeks, uh, voila, cheer, forgive a -matic. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Do you remember when we learned about forgiveness? Oh my goodness, how could I forget? Well, do you think the kids at home would like to hear about it? Oh, most definitely. You would, wouldn't you? What'd they say? Um, I don't know. I think they said yes. Okay, great. Well, should I tell them or, or should you? Oh, go ahead. All right. Well, it all happened one summer while Larry and I were running a tour boat service. Yeah, you see? We have this boat, and we take some people, and we put them on the boat, and then we give them rides way out on the ocean. You see? <clears throat> Sorry. Go ahead. 
thank you. As Larry said, we had a boat and we would give people rides on the ocean. But I remember that day, that fateful trip. Why, yes, it started from that tropic port aboard our tiny ship. Now, Larry, he was a mighty sailor man. And Bob, he was brave and sure. And, uh, weren't there five passengers who'd booked that day on our three-hour tour? Ah, uh, yes, our three-hour tour. Okay, let's see. There was the professor. And we were there. Well, yeah. And, uh, the millionaire. Um, and his wife. Mm-hmm. And wasn't there a movie star and, um, that other girl? Yeah, but they canceled. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, there we were on our three-hour tour, doing our best to entertain the passengers. Some veggies went to see, 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 to see what they could see, see, see. But all that they could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue see, see, see. See? Yes, well, that was just dandy. But isn't it time we left the dock? <laughs> okay, well, fire up the engine first, mate Larry. Aye, aye, Skipper. Lovely day, isn't it? Oh, yes. Why, just smell that salt air. Uh, mighty nice. I think I'll go back and see how our passengers are doing. Can you take over here? No problem, Skipper. It's a big responsibility. You won't daydream, will ya? Don't worry about a thing. I got you covered. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Oh boy, this is a life. There's nothing I'd rather be than first mate Larry. Well, nothing that is. Except... Captain Larry Romanov, the famous Russian icebreaker pilot. Today, Captain Larry must free whales. Two great whales trapped in ice. But there is problem. A large iceberg stands between Captain Larry and Wales. There may not be enough time to go around it, but surely even Captain Larry is not brave enough to smash through the iceberg. No one has ever done such a thing! Yes, this is no time for cowards. Captain Larry will smash the iceberg and free the whale. Ah! Commander Pablo has come to congratulate Captain Larry for his bravery. Hey, Larry, we're making snow cones back there. Do you want peach or strawberry? Um, not now, Bob. First, I have to smash through this iceberg and free some whales. There are no icebergs around here. Oh, yeah? Well, what do you call that? Ah! <coughs> Oof! Uh -huh. Oh, oh. The brochure didn't say anything about layovers. Well, you see, lovey, I, I believe we have had some sort of an accident. Uh, Skipper? Yes, we most certainly had an accident, and I think someone has some explaining to do. Well, um, you see, there were these whales, and they were stuck in the ice. And, well, the only way to get them out was this mess right through that iceberg over there. Except it turned out to be a rock. And rocks are a lot harder than icebergs. It just so happens that the nearest iceberg is 2,640 miles away. What were you thinking? You smashed our boat. Now what are we going to do? You have ruined our vacation. What do you have to say for yourself? Um, I'm sorry? At least the boat is still floating. Oh. I need to call my broker. I'm going to look for a phone. That evening, we all worked together to build some huts to sleep in. But we were still pretty mad at Larry. Gee, it's kind of nice out here. Maybe this isn't so bad after all. Huh, Bob? Not so bad. 
What do you mean, not so bad? Our boat is at the bottom of the ocean, and we're stuck on this island, in the middle of nowhere, with no way to get home. I said I was sorry. At least you could forgive me. Well, it's just that we're... Well, can't you see we're... I just... I just... Can't. Oh. I said I was sorry. Well, that's just not good enough. Good night. Not good enough? Not good enough? He means... He means I'm not good enough. They all think I'm not good enough. I bet they'd be happier if I just left. So that's what I'll do. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna take my thing and just go away. Yeah. I don't have anything. Well, I'll just go. Just with my hat. Goodbye, Bob. I hope you find a first mate that's good enough. the skipper is. Who? Oh, you know, dear, the bright red round fellow. Oh, yes. Uh, where is he, anyway? I don't know. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Oh, I see. Has anyone seen Larry? Did you say something? Uh, no, it was that tree over there. Really? Well, what did it say? I believe it's looking for Larry. Uh, who's Larry? Oh, you remember? He's the chap who smashed the boat. Oh, and ruined our vacation. That's the one. Oh. Well, I hope that tree gets him. Serves him right. Here, here. Hello, people. Have you seen Larry? Oh, look, lovey. It's the skipper. Oh, I didn't know tomatoes grew on trees. Well, actually... Oh, never mind. Hmm. A skipper, what are you doing up there? I'm looking for Larry. When I woke up this morning, he was gone. I've got it. Got what? Our ticket out of here. We can build a giant catapult to fling us back home. Here, I'll demonstrate with his working model. You wind it up, then someone sits here, say, Bob, for example. Now, just pull this cord and... A hose? Ow. Oh, dear. Look what you've done to our house. You bonked me on the head with a coconut. Wow, I did not mean to do that. I am so sorry. Can you ever forgive me? Well, I guess it was an accident, and you did say you were sorry, so I forgive you. Thanks. I'm really sorry about your house. I'd be glad to help you fix it if you want me to. Do you think you could forgive me? We know you didn't mean to do it, so so we'll forgive you. Oh, thanks. Gee, it sure does feel good to be forgiven when you make mistakes. Yes, sir. Boy, if I said I was sorry for doing something wrong and, and really meant it, and people still wouldn't forgive me, I'd feel just terrible. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well... Larry said he was sorry for smashing the boat. And that was just an accident, too. Just like when I hit you with that coconut. Or when you fell through their roof. And we wouldn't forgive Larry at all. So that's why he went away. He must feel terrible. We've got to find him. Oh, come on, everybody. I, I think he's over here, maybe. Larry!
Well, we realize that everybody makes mistakes sometimes, and it was wrong for us not to forgive you when you said you were sorry. Yeah? Yeah. Can you forgive us for not forgiving you? Um, okay. I forgive you guys. Uh, phew. Oh, good. Hello? Did you say something? No, it was that tree again. I'm so happy to see you forgiving each other. It makes me want to sing. Do you mind? No! You know that in love we can forgive. It is the only way to live. Obey God and see that we can live in harmony. Since God has forgiven us, it's true. You forgive me, I'll forgive you. I'm gonna start to show forgiveness from my heart. Oh, that works! Right, if only there was a way for us to get back home. Yeah. Well, at least we're all friends again. Hey, has anybody seen the professor? Nope. Wah! Do you like it? I made it entirely out of bamboo and coconuts. Pretty good, huh? Well, climb aboard. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Larry. Um, next summer, let's just sell lemonade, like everyone else. That sounds like a good idea. You know that in love we can forgive. Hey, man, it is the only way to live. Obey God and see that we can live in harmony. Since God has forgiven us, it's true. You forgive me, I'll forgive you. I'm gonna start to show forgiveness from my heart. So do your part and show forgiveness from your heart. Now, Dave lived in a land called Israel a long, long time ago. So long ago that there weren't any cars or telephones or vacuum cleaners or anything. There were mostly just sheep, especially around Dave's house, because Dave was a shepherd. No, no, that's not him. That's one of his brothers. Nope, another brother. Uh, nope, another brother. Dave had a lot of brothers. Aha! There he is! Uh, no, not the sheep. He's behind the sheep. Uh, shoo there, Fluffy. Hi, I'm Dave. I have a lot of brothers. Yep, seven to be exact. Now, Dave and his brothers spent most of their time in the fields taking care of their sheep, which could be hard work because their sheep had an unusual problem. They tip over. Oh, look. That guy's right now. But Dave had an even bigger problem. You see, of all the brothers, he was the smallest. That's right. Everybody's bigger than I am. And sometimes his big brothers would pick on him. <laughs> oh, Dave, one of my sheep fell over. Would you come pick it up for me? I'm kind of busy right now. Do you remember the time we dipped you in tar and stuck you to the backside of an angry water buffalo? I'll be right Hey, Dave, nah. one of my sheep fell, too. Just a minute. <laughs> oh, my sheep fell over. Dave. Oh, Dave, after you pick up our sheep, could you run and get me a bite to eat? I'm famished. Oh, yeah, me too. Get me something, too. You know, sometimes I think I could eat a whole camel. Oh, yeah? Well, sometimes. I think I could eat a whole spaceship. Uh, what's a spaceship? I have no idea. <laughs> That's how things had pretty much always been for Dave. Nothing really exciting happened around there until one day when their dad, Jesse, came running out with some uh, horrible uh, news. Uh, 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 Dave, can you pick those up? Oh, oh, boys! Oh, oh, boys! I got, I got horrible news! The villa just built the, the Philippines! And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, they're attacking! The lima beans are, uh, lacking? 
The nectarines are quacking? One more time, please, and let's work on our enunciation. The Philistines are attacking! Uh, Bob, what are the Philippines? The Philippines are a group of islands off the coast of Southeast Asia, but that's not important now. The Philistines were people who hated Israel. They wanted to take Israel's land and make the Israelites their slaves, so they'd have to do whatever the Philistines told them to do. Oh, that's bad. You're right. So the Israelites needed to protect themselves. We need to protect ourselves, but how? King Saul is putting together an army to stop the Philistines. He needs your help. You must help save Israel. We, we must help save Israel. save Israel. We must help save Israel. We must help save Israel. Hey, 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 Dave. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> it's very nice that you want to help, but saving a country is a big thing. You're a little guy. Big people do big things, and little people do little things. So, stay with the sheep. <laughs> They're big. I'm little. They go, I twiddle. Why can't little guys do big things too? By the time Dave's brothers arrived at King Saul's camp, battle lines had been drawn between the Philistines and the Israelites. And, as was the custom in their day, the armies lined up and yelled at each other. Hello, Israelites! You are thieves! And soon we will put apples in your mouths and stick you in our toaster ovens! <laughs> oh, yes, definitely, thief, thief! You, you will be our slaves and you will have to fetch us our sleepers! Yes, and iron our trousers! Oh, and wipe our little noses! Aha! Uh -huh. And scratch that spot on our backs we cannot reach no matter how hard we try! <laughs> Don't you have anything to say? Um, do you guys have any fried chicken? I've got a real hankering for fried chicken. Yeah, me too. This is going to be easier than we thought. You know, I think I can save us all a lot of time. How about if we bring out our strongest man, and you bring out your strongest man, and they will fight. If our champion beats your champion, you will be our slaves. But if your champion defeats us, we will be your slaves. What do you think about that? Well, the Israelites were getting kind of tired of the yelling, and the Philistines did seem a little on the small side, so King Saul agreed. That seems like a reasonable idea. All right, we agree. Send out your champion. Hey, Goliath! We'll be back with more Dave and the Giant Pickle after this break. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. One day, while talking with Dr. Archibald, Laddie confronts one of his deepest fears. If my lips ever left my mouth, packed a bag and headed south, that'd be too bad. I'd be so sad. I see, that'd be too bad. Be so sad. That'd be too bad. All righty. If my lips said adios, I don't like you, I think you're gross, that'd be too bad. I might get mad. Hmm, that'd be too bad. You might get mad. That'd be too bad. Fascinating. If my lips moved to the loose, left a mess and took my tooth, that'd be too bad. I'd call my dad. Oh dear, that'd be too bad. You'd call your dad. That'd be too bad. Hold it. Did you say you're Father? 
Fascinating! So what you're saying is, if your lips left you... That'd be too bad, I'd be so sad, I might get mad, I'd call my dad, that'd be too bad. That'd be too bad. That'd be too bad. Why? Because I love my lips. Oh my, this is more serious than I thought. Laddie, what do you see here? Um, that looks like a lip. What about this? It's a lip. And this? It's a lip, it's a lip, it's a lip, 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 it's a lip, it's a lip, it's a lip, 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 it's a lip, it's a lip, it's a lip, 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 lip. Laddie, tell me about your childhood. When I was just two years old, I left my lips out in the cold and they turned blue. What could I do? Oh dear, they turned blue, what could you do? Oh, they turned blue. I see. On the day I got my tooth, I had to kiss my great aunt Ruth. She had a beard, and it felt weird. My, my, she had a beard, and it felt weird? She had a beard. Oh. Ten days after I turned eight, got my lips stuck in a gate. My friends all laughed, and I just stood there until the fire department came and broke the lock with the crowbar, and I had to spend the next six weeks in lip rehab with this kid named Oscar who got stung by a bee right on the lip, and we couldn't even talk to each other until the fifth week because both of our lips were so swollen, and when he did start speaking, he just spoke Polish, and I only knew like three words in Polish, except now I know four because Oscar taught me the word for lip. Usta. Your friends all laughed. Usta. How do you spell that? I don't know. So what you're saying is that when you were young... They turned blue, what could I do? She had a beard and it felt weird, my friends all laughed. whoop -da. I'm confused. I love my lips! This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie say... Have I ever told you how I feel about my nose? Oh, look at the time! Bye, ba boo ba billy ba bee ba dee ba boo ba billy ba And now, back to Dave and the Giant Pickle! Who will I fight? The Israelites were so terrified of Goliath that they all ran away and hid! Hmm, nobody will fight. I'll come back tomorrow. And that's exactly what he did. Goliath came back the next day, and the next day, and the next day for 40 days. But every time he showed up, all the Israelites ran away and hid. Finally, Jesse started to worry about his boys, so he sent little Dave to the battlefield with some food. <laughs> Now Dave got to King Saul's camp just about the time Goliath was going to come out, so all the Israelites were hiding. Hello? Is anybody here? Shh, he'll hear you. Who? <laughs> Him, that big pickle over there. Who will fight me? Well? Who's going to fight him? What are you, nuts? He'd have us for lunch. Speaking of which, what'd you bring us? Here you go. Mmm, pizza. Oh, cheese in the crust. That's tremendous. Come on, guys. Have you forgotten? We're the children of God. The what? The children of God. The Bible says that the Israelites were God's chosen people. God led them through the desert. He helped them walk across the Red Sea. And whenever they went into battle, God was there with them. They had always known that if God was on their side, no one could stand against them. Wow. But King Saul and his men were so scared of big, tall Goliath, they forgot that God was even bigger. Oh, dear. Uh, Larry... You've got something on your, uh... Huh? Oh, never mind. Once again, no one would answer Goliath's challenge. Oh, no one to fight. They told me that you are the children of God. You are cowards. I come back tomorrow. I can't believe you're letting them say that! Somebody's gotta do something! 
what are you gonna do, Dave? Remember, you're a little guy. Leave this big stuff to us big people. <gasps> do you think he saw me? No, you're okay. Phew. Well, Dave knew exactly what he had to do, so he went straight to King Saul and announced his plan. I will fight Goliath! King Saul took the news rather well. I'm sorry, my ears must be failing. I could have sworn I heard you say that you'd fight Goliath. But you didn't say that, did you? Yes, I did! Oh. I say, that's very kind, but let's be reasonable. You are a tiny little fellow, and, well, Goliath, he's, he's enormous. No, 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 that's a job for a big person, not a little boy like you. You're not going to sing, are you? Couldn't you just play your harp and I'll throw things at you? No. Oh. What you're saying? All right, I understand. Now let's suppose that this is true. You still look rather weepy, but I know what we can do. Just step behind this curtain. It will only take a minute. There's a closet in the corner, and you'll like what I've got in it. You'll find my royal armor there. Now, Danny, put it on. Yes, now you'll look much bigger when the battle lines are drawn. One more thing you'll need, I think. Pick up my royal sword. It's a big one and a beauty. The best we could afford. Once you've got it all together, I think you will agree. You're bound to do much better if you try to look like me. Oh dear. You know, I think maybe I should just be plain old me. Oh, yes. Well, I, I suppose. But have you seen Goliath? Why, he's he's just he's He's big! That's bigger! Well, Dave wasn't exactly sure what he was getting into, but he knew God would be there with him. So he went down to a stream and found five smooth stones. Then he went back to the camp and waited for Goliath. Who will fight me? I will fight you, Goliath! You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that sounded like Dave. Oh, yeah! <laughs> You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that looks like Dave. Huh? Dave? Goliath was equally surprised. Who said that? <clears throat> I did! Huh? Whoa, ho, ho. am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? We know what you mean, but you are not a dog. You are a really big guy that wants to beat me up. And I come at you not with sticks, but in the name of the God of Israel, who this day shall help me defeat you. We will see who defeats who. Now we fight. It's shut down. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
that they all ran away and hid, and Israel was saved. And that's the story of Dave, a really little guy who did a really big thing. Right. Now, those weren't their real names. No, their real names were, uh, let me see if I can get this right. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and, uh, Abednego. <laughs> of course, nobody could remember those, so we took to calling them Rack, Shack, and Benny. Anyways, they came with a bunch of other boys and girls that Mr. Nezzer brought in to work at his chocolate factory. Well, who's Mr. Nezzer? <laughs> we'll get to that later. Who am I? Why, I'm George. Anything that goes in or out of Nez of chocolate gotta come by me. Well, speaking of which, it's almost 8 o'clock. Time for the morning milk delivery. Here comes Laura now. Well, she's my favorite. Good morning, George. How are you? I hope you're feeling fine. I'd love to stay and talk, but it's almost 8 o'clock and I haven't got... See you later! Because we work real hard at the chocolate factory. We start at 8 and we don't get lunch till 3. I gotta drive a truck to make a buck so I can send it home to my family. Well now, you are in trouble. Your time card is at wreck. It's almost 2 past 8. I'll tell Nezzer that you're late and he'll take it from your check. Yes, Mr. Lunt. Oh, yes, we work real hard at the chocolate factory. Excuse me, Mr. Lunt, but I've got an injury. Now get back on the line. You'll be just fine. With all this work to do, we've got no time for sympathy. We used to be so happy. We used to laugh and run. Now there's no time to play, cause we gotta work on it. And it isn't very fun. I'm Rack. I'm Jack. I'm Benny. We work here in the plant. We'd like to take a break, for goodness sake. But Mr. Nazar says, you can't. <laughs> we all need a vacation. call him Mr. Nezzer. Now, Mr. Nezzer's not a bad man. He just gets confused sometimes. Why, his chocolate bunnies are selling so well, I, I think he's gotten a little big for his britches. And that's saying something, because his britches were pretty big to start out with. What's all this have to do with Rack, Shack, and Benny? Well, their troubles start when Mr. Nezzer makes a little announcement. Attention, little people! I have an announcement! This morning, Nezza Chocolate shipped its two millionth chocolate bunny! To celebrate this momentous occasion, for the next 30 minutes, everyone may eat as many bunnies as they want! Bon appetit! Eh, hey, boss. 
That's awfully nice of you giving away all those bonnies. Oh, if I could just see the looks on their faces right now. Hey guys, I don't think we should eat any more bunnies. Well, what do you mean? Mr. Nezzer said we could eat as many as we, we want. Well, don't you remember what our parents taught us? We shouldn't eat very much candy because it's not very good for us. Shaq, our parents aren't here now. We're on our own. Besides, everybody else is doing it. Rack, Benny, listen to me. I know our parents aren't here right now, but I keep thinking of a song my mom used to sing to me a long time ago. Think of me every day, hold tight to what I say, and I'll be close to you even from far away. Know that wherever you are, it is never too far. If you think of me, I'll be with you. Know that wherever you are, it is never too far. If you think of me, Our parents aren't here right now to help us do what's right. If we remember what they taught us, it's kind of like they are here. <laughs> okay, no more bunnies. I'm doing it for my mom. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Well, that about does it. What do you say we pop in and let them show their appreciation? Oh, yeah. They really gonna appreciate you, boss. Hello? Hmm. I don't feel very appreciated. Hey, look. They are lying on the floor like they're sick or something. Hmm? You mean I let them eat my bunnies and in return they all wanna play hooky? Wait, boss. Those three guys over there, they don't look sick. Oh? Hmm. Ahem. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Nezzer, for your lovely gift of chocolate. Yeah, thanks! Everybody else is lying down, but you three are standing up. Actually, boss, I think the tomato is sitting. I'm standing. Sitting. Look, this is sitting, and this is standing. I'm standing. Okay, he's standing. What are your names, boys? I'm Shadrach. I'm Meshack. I'm a bumblebee, a Benny Boo. I'm Benny. We can use boys who know how to stand up here at Neza Chocolate. How would you like to be junior executives? What's it mean? It means you have to wear a tie. Sure, that'd be great. All righty, Mr. Lunt, get them their ties. Right away, boss. Boys, I want to see you in my office first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Well, what do you know? Rack Shack and Benny did what they thought was right, even though nobody else was doing it. And it paid off. This time, anyway. But boy, were they in for a surprise when they got to Mr. Nezzer's office the next day. Boys, have I got a surprise for you. The other day, I was thinking about the Nezzer chocolate bunny, thinking about how wonderful the bunny is, how beautiful the bunny is, and I thought to myself, I thought, oh, if only all my workers love the bunny as much as I do. I asked myself, why don't they love it as much? Do you know why? Because it's small. It's a little bunny. What they need is a bunny they can look up to. And I mean way up to. This is just a model. The real bunny is 90 feet high. My workers finished it this morning. Wow, that's a big bunny, sir. Mm-hmm. 
Since you're my junior executives, I wanted you to see it first. But this afternoon, everyone will meet the new bunny, and it's gonna be a beautiful thing when everybody bows down and sings the bunny song. Um, I don't think I'm familiar with that particular tune. Could you just hum a few bars? You know, I was hoping you'd ask. The bunny song is how all my employees will show just how much they love the bunny. How nothing is more important than the bunny. How they do anything for the bunny. And it goes something like this. The bunny, the bunny, whoa, I love the bunny. I don't love my soup or my bread, just the bunny. The bunny, the bunny, yeah, I love the bunny. I gave everything that I had for the bunny. I don't want no health food when it's time to feed. A big bag of bunnies is all that I need. I don't want nobody's to come out and play. I'll sit on my sofa, eat bunnies all day. I won't eat no beans, and I won't eat tofu. That stuff is for sissies, but bunnies. say if someone didn't quite agree with everything in that song so they didn't um didn't sing it what would happen what's that over there that's the furnace what's it for well that's where the bad bunnies go let's just say in my mind if you don't bow down and sing the song you're a bad bunny you don't mean... But I'm sure that won't happen. It's almost time for the ceremony. I'll see you out there. Now this was a pickle. That bunny song was chock full of stuff they knew was wrong. But if they don't sing it, Nezza says he's going to throw them in the furnace. Woo! Well, what would you do if you were them? I better hold that thought. The ceremony's starting. Thank you for attending today's festivities. It is with great pleasure that I present to you the object of our affection, your new best friend, the Bunny! Now it is time to bow and sing the Bunny Song! Hey, boss, those three guys don't look like they're bowing. Hmm? Aren't those our new junior executives? I think so. Maybe they're stuck. Let's find out. I said it's time to sing the bunny song. Sing the song. They ain't singing, boss. Sing! Think of me every day. Is that the bunny song? No, I don't think so. Are you crazy? That's the wrong song. Far away. Know that wherever you are, it is never 
too far. If you think of me, I'll be with you. <gasps> oh, that was beautiful. I'm going to be singing that song myself. As I throw you into the furnace, God sees them. Take them to the furnace. Rat Shack and Benny will be right back after this short break. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. Laddie will be performing the traditional Argentinian ballad, The Dance of the Cucumber, in its original Spanish. Bob the Tomato will translate. Miren al pepino, Watch the bien cucumber. Como se See mueve, how he moves. Como un león, like a lion. Tras un chasing a mouse. Miren al pepino, Watch the cucumber. Es suave, es oh, how smooth his motion. Es como like butter and on, on a pelón. bald monkey. Miren al pepino, Watch the cucumber. Los vegetales. All the vegetables. Envy their friend. Wishing bailar. to dance as he. Pepino bailarín. Dancing cucumber. Pepino Dancing cucumber. Pepino Dancing cucumber. Baila, baila dance, ya. dance, yeah. Miren el tomate. Look at the tomato. No es triste. Isn't it sad? Él no puede bailar. He can't dance. Pobre tomate. Poor tomato. Él desearía poder bailar como el pepino. He wishes he could dance like the cucumber. Libre y suavemente. Free and smooth. Pero no puede danzar. But he, he can't. Okay, stop the music. What do you mean I can't dance? I can dance. But well, what about Uncle Louie's polka party? Didn't you see me dancing at Uncle Louie's polka party? No comprendo. No comprendo? I'll show you no comprendo. Mom, Dad, look over here. Get a picture of me next to the cucumber in authentic Argentinian garb. Okay, Junior. But we better hurry. I think the dwarves have your mother confused with someone else. <laughs> Say peas. Peas. Escuchen al pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Oigan su Hear voz fuerte. Como voice. un león. Like a lion. Listo a devorar. About to eat. Escuchen al pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Que dulce es su canto. How sweet his voice. Que sopla su garganta. Parece like un trinar. Parece un trinar. Escuchen al Listen pepino. Listen to the cucumber. Los vegetales. All the vegetables. Envy their friend. Como él wishing to cantar. sing as he. Pepino cantador. Singing cucumber. Pepino cantador. Singing cucumber. Pepino cantador. Singing cucumber. Sing, canta sing, ya. yeah. Escuchen al tomate. Listen to the tomato. No es triste. Isn't it sad? Él no puede cantar. He can't sing. Pobre tomate. Poor Tomato. Él desearía poder cantar. He wishes he could sing. Fuerte y dulce como el pepino. Strong and sweet like the cucumber. Pero no puede. But he can't. Ni siquiera da un silbido. Can't even whistle. All right, that's it, señor. Come over here and let me sing you a song. This has been Silly Songs with Laddie. Tune in next time to hear Laddie sing. Bob is really angry. I hope he doesn't catch me. It's so hard to run with the sombrero on my head. And now, back to our story. Is everyone comfortable? Good. Rack, I can't move my arms. Ah, uh, Benny, you don't have any arms. Oh. I've tried to be patient, I've tried to be kind. Can you tell me what the trouble is? Am I losing my mind? Now I didn't ask for much, just one simple little thing. Didn't ask you to part the waters, I just wanted to hear you sing. I gave you hats, I gave you ties, I let you eat my buddies, and this is how you repay me. But to show you what kind of guy I am, I'll ask you one more time.
time. Will you or will you not sing the song? Well, you see, sir, our parents taught us to stand up for what we believe in. And God wants us to do what's right. And there's a lot of stuff in that song that's not right. So, we don't mean to be a bother. We hope you understand. But we cannot sing that song. I understand, boys. You do? Oh, yes. I understand that you're bad bunnies! Now, if I'm not mistaken, that truck belongs to me, Mr. Lunt. Oh, but look, my truck seems to be full of garbage. Mr. Lunt, is there anything you can do about that? Hey, no problem, boss. Yeah. I sure hope that you were right. Huh? Mr. Lunt? It wasn't me, boss. I said, nobody bakes my buddies. Listen here, young lady. If you don't plug that back in, you're gonna be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna stand up to me again! try to make you do things you weren't supposed to do. What was I thinking? I must have forgot everything that my mommy taught me. Can you ever forgive me? We forgive you. Oh, thanks. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Well, you can sing one of our songs. Well, how's it go? You know, I was hoping you'd ask. It's why she tells me what I need to know I got a lot of respect for that woman But sometimes when I'm playing with a buddy or two They're doing things that know I'm not supposed to do Do you go along? Even though the things they do are wrong mm -hmm. I remember stand up Stand up, stand up For what you believe in Believe in, believe in God He's the one that 
to back you up. We're scared with you. When everybody tells you that you gotta be cool, remember what you learned in church and Sunday school. Just check it out. The Bible tells us what it's all about. Oh, you know that's right. So if you have a question, go ask your dad. And he can tell you if a thing is good or bad. You'll make their day. Uh-huh. If you remember what your parents say. What they say. They told us stand, stand up. Stand up. For what you believe in. Believe in. Believe in God. He's the one to back you up. We'll stand with you. Stand up!